Hi, this is Lucy, your Clarity Coach, and this is Tuesday Talks at 3. Welcome to the episode of Negotiation Mastery Series, Episode 1. And in this series, we're going to be looking at four specific episodes. You see, every day we are faced with the instances of making decisions. And as a result of being faced with this decision-making opportunity every day, in the same aspect comes negotiation. So negotiation is key when you're making your decisions. How do I move forward? What do I need to say? What do I need to confirm? Who do I need? What kind of research do I need? Support, whether it is resources that you also need. So this particular series is going to be taking us through four episodes that are going to help us in this negotiation process that we face every single day. So nothing unique, nothing that we're going to pick out of a hat or a box somewhere. It's what is happening daily in our personal and in our professional lives. So when we look at it in this particular way, we're able then to allow ourselves the opportunity of growth. Growth in which way? How we handle our negotiation processes. Because it is a given. It happens every day. We are presented this amazing opportunity. So how do we show up? And I hope that these four episodes are going to help you have something in your toolbox to use as you're showing up. Well, today we're going to start off with the key principles of negotiation. It's all about understanding effective negotiation. What do you need to do to start off? How do you take, make that first step forward? How do you figure out what to do? That will be our first episode. Our second episode is going to be on influence. And just as you hear the power of that word, influence. Oh, great to see you there, Sharon. Great to see you there, welcome. So in influence, we're going to be looking at developing um, conflict resolution skills for a positive outcome. So we're developing those skills for a positive outcome. And this is the influence that we have to the outcome. What are we doing here today, here and now in our personal and our professional lives to influence a positive outcome? Because that's what we want. Nobody wants a negative outcome. And if it does happen, then we are looking at the learnings of that negative outcome. Thirdly, we're going to look at assertiveness. Now, assertiveness is key when it comes to negotiation. So being able to know where to apply your assertiveness, where to apply your empathy, to get the conversation moving towards a mutually beneficial outcome, hopefully a positive one. And last but not least, we look at solutions. Solution, being solution-oriented is a huge thing. When you walk into a situation looking for solutions, you're going to find them. If you walk into a situation looking for problems, looking for blocks, looking for hurdles, looking for sabotage, you will find them too. So whatever it is you focus on, that is what your outcome is going to be influenced by. So in this case, our fourth episode is going to be around solutions, whether it's win-win solution, whether it is a win-lose solution, whether it is a, a stalemate, because all this can happen. Because in decision-making, we are faced with challenging situations. So why not bring solutions to the table? Those are the four episodes we're going to be covering. Today, however, we are starting off with the key principles the key principles of negotiation and I would like us to explore three specific key principles towards this to help us in our daily lives these are things that I promise you by the end of our session today that you can be able to plug and play so the question that I'm going to start you off with is how do you prepare for a negotiation do you find yourself just Entering a negotiation because it is somebody else's agenda? Is it you who, have, who has set it up? How do you prepare for a negotiation? That is our key question today that we will seek to answer as we continue with our session. So I promised you three key negotiation principles. And the first one is just like that question asked, preparation. Preparation. You see, thorough preparation enables you to understand both yours and the other person's 
desires, their goals, their interests, their potential concessions. And when, when I say concessions, I want you to think of different things like um, outcomes, the things that they're looking for. I want you to think of things like um, SOPs. Uh, I want you to consider things like um, the outcome in a, in a more structured manner. I mean, what, what is somebody looking for? And you will be able to find out that there could be some modifications or adjustments that they're looking for. Already a decision was made about something, but now we are revisiting, and therefore there's a negotiation as to how this can happen. I mean, just the other day I, I had a contract that I drew up with a client, but we had to revisit this contract and adjust a few things. That was a negotiation opportunity. So how do you prepare for that? And in so doing, once you prepare, what does that do for you? Well, to answer that last question, if you prepare thoroughly, it helps you build your confidence. Your confidence in what it is you want to bring to the table, what your prayer is, what your desire is. And it positions you to be able to make informed decisions because you've prepared, you've done your due diligence, you have done your research, you have gone and asked questions. Maybe you've interacted with past experiences and you're bringing them to the table. By having this research, it is easy for you to be prepared in a thorough and effective way. You're not caught off guard. And you may challenge me and say, but I may have prepared something, Lucy, but then something else comes up during the meeting that I was not prepared for. Well, I encourage you to work with that that you can control. So you know for sure that these things you've prepared for are trustworthy. And this is where your focus will remain. Your focus will remain on that that you know. That that you do not know, you can seek some extended time to go back and do your research, further research. So due diligence is key. It is so important that you figure it out as we're going on. We talk a bit about fluidity in a moment. So what are we looking at here? Identifying your non-negotiables. That's one way to go about it. I'm walking in and this is what I would like on the table. These are my desires, my goals, my interests. Uh, these are the things I want to discuss. You've put it on the table. You understand what the other person also is coming in there, their possible demands. Now once you have your non-negotiables, it may not always work out in your favor. So you want to have your best alternatives. You want to have your best alternatives. One, two, three. Something that you can adapt and evolve into. So if I do not get this, then I'm okay to settle for one, two, three. But first, I am going for the stars. And I will settle on the clouds. But that is your best alternative option. So is this something that you have worked on in the past and seen that it works? Drop here in the chat and just share with us so that we can be able to share together and see how best we can help one another. Today we're talking about the key principles of negotiation and I have promised to give you three tips, tips that have worked very well for me. And the first one that we are on right now is preparation, thorough preparation, where research is needed where we've already talked about having non-negotiables knowing your non-negotiables and knowing your best alternatives this is key for you so prepare a list of shall we say possible concessions possible demands let's give a perfect example in the, in the corporate world in the corporate world we've got a term SOP that's a standing operating procedure. Maybe this is what you want to negotiate on. You want to adjust them, whether you want to tighten them, whether you want to loosen them, whatever it is, this is what you're walking into a negotiation meeting with. So prepare yourself thoroughly. That's what it looks like. Go through those SOPs, understand them. Understand the principles behind them. Now this is in the corporate world. Understand why they're in this way and how they serve you, whether it is well or not well. You're clear. It's not that at this point, when the other party begins to ask you questions, you're now flipping pages, rummaging, looking for books and notes, or calling people. Do your research. 
familiarize yourself with your concessions or the things that you're bringing to the table, the things that perhaps you want to be able to modify, the things that you want to be able to acknowledge or understand. Make sure that you're doing that. So you're in a position of already preparing your knowledge. Make sure that this is something that you have. When you prepare this list of possible outcomes of this meeting, you already have a head start. Because any question that you're asked, you know whether you know the answer or whether you don't. And you don't waste time. You may ask for an extended time for negotiation and say, I need to research a bit more on that and get back to you. Suggest a date, suggest a time. Suggest uh, a way, that you, a format that you're going to have this negotiation. So maybe now it's just going to be on phone, or SMS, or it's going to be on WhatsApp, or it's going to be on email. Decide what it is you're going to do because you are the one who's giving yourself that control of the things that you are within your control in the negotiation. So preparation is the cornerstone of effective negotiation. I cannot say that enough times. And it provides you that necessary insight and confidence. Your confidence does build, especially if you've gone through one, two, three, four continued types of negotiations, very key. And you'll be able to navigate your discussions from a point of knowledge. And key is that you are respectful of the other people around the table. So the question that I was begging to answer today is, how do you prepare for negotiation? I'd like to see here in the chat. I'm just looking there and saying, Sharon, welcome. I'm seeing, ah, okay, I can see a do builder, a do builder. I hope I'm pronouncing that well. I can see Caleb. Caleb, so great to see you here. Guys, the question is, how do you prepare for a negotiation? And does preparation play a part? I'd love to hear from you. Share with me your thoughts here and, and let us just sample some of them. So that is the first thing, the first key principle. The other one is active listening. You see, active listening helps to build rapport. Everybody wants to feel heard or seen. Right now, I am desirous that you're hearing me, that you're seeing me. I'm also desirous of you understanding me. So I'm hoping that you are listening to understand as opposed to listening to respond. If somebody could just type that for me here in the thread, listening to understand, because that is active listening. When you're listening to understand means you're taking it in, you're internalizing it, you're formatting it in your mind before you respond. Many a times we don't do that. Many a times we are stuck around listening to respond and therefore we rob ourselves of the opportunity to understand what is on the table. We just lose it. Great to see you there, Felix. Great to see you. Welcome today. We are talking about the key principles of negotiation. We've covered preparation. Now we're into active listening. And I just asked somebody out there who is listening to type out uh, that we need to be listening to understand. That is so key. We need to listen to understand. As opposed to listening to respond because as a human being, that's your go-to. You're always waiting. And because you've got all this knowledge going on, so you want to be able to share it out there. I would recommend to you that focusing on understanding what somebody is saying is key because that way you are able to make a decision on how to move forward. I would recommend that you use reflective listening to confirm understanding. So Lucy, did you just say that we need to listen to understand? You see, that's reflective listening. Ask that question. Then lastly, I encourage you to be aware of the non verbal cues and body language because many a times you're talking and people are responding to you but you're not reading the room someone is bored to death someone does not understand what you're saying someone is totally refusing what you are sending out and you need to approach this in a very mindful way and seek to understand what is it that they would like to know better of. And I can see Sharon here, you're saying understanding your counterpart would help prepare for a negotiation. Fantastic. So the question is, how do you prepare for a negotiation? And Sharon, you're saying by understanding your counterpart. So the different parties on the table, understanding them. 
So it's about you. Great to see you there, Omondi. Welcome. Today we are talking about the three key principles, three key principles of negotiation. And the question is, how do you prepare for a negotiation? That's what is right here. So where was I? I was talking about you walking into a meeting and preparing yourself to the point that you know what you want to talk about. It doesn't stop there. You need to know what the other party wants to talk about. And if you don't have all the information, then listen. Listen to understand from the words that are spoken. Also, the non-verbal cues. They speak a lot. In fact, in research, we are told that 55% of communication happens in body language. So it's not so much your words, which is only 7% in fact, but it is the way that somebody responds, those non-verbal cues. So make sure that you're aware of those in a negotiation because active listening fosters trust and clarity. Active listening fosters trust and clarity. And I really wish somebody could type in there for me in the chat that we need to listen to understand. Listen to understand. If you can type fast enough, it's listen to understand rather than responding. Listen to understand. I hope that is this one thing that you can take away with you today is listening to understand. So active listening, as I was saying, allows you this position to build trust for all the parties around the table. When's the last time you were in a negotiation situation and you just felt like you could not trust the people around you. And if I ask you, why do you believe that to be true? You may not be able to say what you think, why you think it's true. But if I question you further, you're going to say, actually, they didn't say it. It was in the unsaid, which is literally the nonverbal cues. I like that you're saying that there for me. Listen to understand rather than responding. Thank you so much, Sharon, for interacting with me there. You've put it out there. Everybody else can read it now. I am most grateful. I'm just reaffirming that with active listening, we are driving towards achieving a mutually beneficial agreement. There's trust in there. There's clarity in there. There's respect in there because I have been heard. In fact, half of the time, when you just hear somebody out, you fizzle out anything that could have been on the table that was blocking this conversation from going on. But many a times we come in with our agenda, we are hot-headed, and it's either my way or the highway. Today, choose to listen, to understand. Today, choose to do that as opposed to listening to responding. Thank you for sharing that, Sharon. The third key principle is setting clear objectives. Setting clear objectives. <laughs> and you, you, you may put me on the spot there and say, but Lucy, that should have been the first one. Well, in no particular order, these are the three key principles. And that is preparation, active listening, and setting clear objectives. Clear objectives provide a roadmap. So you know that when I go in, I'm going to start with this and move to this and move to the other. When I go in, I'm going to stay focused on this particular aspect. The other party may gaslight, bring up something that is emotional. It can be very easy for you to get swayed. But when you have a roadmap, this particular key principle allows you to stay focused. And this particular roadmap will allow you the opportunity to measure progress after this negotiation. You heard me right, to measure progress. So it doesn't end here in this negotiation circle. It goes beyond. Because once we've agreed we've passed a resolution or we've signed a contract, we need to execute something. Now the negotiation will only mean something if we're able to execute those clear objectives that we're able to measure. If not, then we just came in to waste a lot of airtime. And we are all busy. We don't want to waste our time. So your clear objective has got to be tested on the smart frame, which is your specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time-bound. It has to be measured to that. Because once it does, that that gets measured gets done. We're in agreement. In conclusion, we say so. Today, we came in to speak about X, Y, Z. We are leaving understanding that X is this, Y is this, and Z is that. 
And therefore, moving forward, this is what we need to do. And then you give out the duties. Who is doing what? You give out timelines. When are we reporting? How are we going to know that we are successful in this? Prioritizing objectives to distinguish your must-haves and your nice-to-haves. Remember we talked about non-negotiables and we talked about your best alternatives? So these are the things you want to work out with. Is it a must-have or a nice-to-have? You are being adaptable. You are being fluid. You are evolving with the conversation. Because when you remain flexible, you adapt as the discussion evolves. You may have walked in with one particular idea, but when you have actively listened, you find that a few things you need to become flexible on. You may even surprise yourself and learn something new. You may even end up abandoning that objective that you walked in with because of your open-mindedness approach to coming to the table, you've learned something new and you can see how it's going to serve you. This way it's more sustainable than just going with the flow of somebody else. So having clear objectives keeps negotiations goal-oriented. All the emotions are out of the picture. And once you're goal-oriented, you are efficient and you are effective. When you involve emotions, it comes to then goes, tomorrow I'm going to wake up with a different emotion. But that doesn't change the goals that we had. But it changes me that I could end up just changing tracks on everybody. And then people don't have clarity. And, and really, ambiguity is not something that is pleasant when we are moving forward. So with this goal-oriented nature, of this principle of setting clear objectives, we are able to come out of a meeting with such clarity on how we are progressing forward, the outcome. And we can tell whose interests were met, whose interests were not met. Well, in conclusion, as we come to the end of our session today, our question was, how do you prepare for a negotiation? And I love what Beth said by understanding what Sharon said, by understanding your counterpart. So as we look at preparation, we looked at active listening, and we looked at setting clear objectives, we've identified that these are key principles of negotiation. I invite you to understand that effective negotiation hinges on thorough preparation. So what negotiation are you going into right after this session? Maybe this evening, maybe tomorrow, maybe over the weekend. How prepared are you? Is it thorough enough? Yes, you may not have all the answers, but do it within your control. Prepare yourself. Do your due diligence. Do your research. Active listening is the second one that we pointed out. How can you improve your participation in a negotiation or at a negotiation table? Is it through active listening? Is it something that you can apply today? And how do you see this happening for you? Just remember, everybody wants to be heard, including you. So how would you like to be treated? This is how you're going to treat somebody else. Pay attention to the